Hey everybody, it's Leslie from Sew A Lot Creative Sewing Centers in Lexington, Kentucky and Centerville, Ohio. I am coming to you with Kimberbell Digital Dealer Exclusive for February 2023. We are going to make this so lucky bench buddy with a flange um, and talk about a few other ideas and tips and tricks for this project. I hope you really enjoy and if you have questions, please reach out to us. Don't forget, if you like this video, like it on the button below, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel too. Enjoy! So the first thing we're going to do is prepare our fabric. For the cutting instructions, everything's given and listed here for reference. We're going to cut our fabrics, we're going to cut our battings and our fusible backings so that we have everything ready to go. So first off, we're going to cut an 8 by 8 inch square. That will be our main background. This is done out of the ice blue or the light color in your kit. I've also cut a piece of fusible backing that I've adhered to the back side of this in the exact same size using my iron and following the directions for the fusible backing you've used. Uh, Kimberbell has fusible backing, SF101 works, woven fusible. Anything that is a woven, fusible, one single-sided backing will work great here. That will help stabilize the stitches, um, give everything a nice, clean, pretty look. We're also going to cut a filler block, which is going to be that one on the side. The other piece of fabric you'll need to have prepared is the dark green filler block, which will be cut at five and a half by seven inches. This may vary from your printed instructions as there was a correction made. This also is gonna have a piece of that woven fusible or fusible backing SF-101, again, fused to the back side. So you're gonna cut it the same size and fuse. From your brighter green fabric, your stem, your flanges, for both the ends and the length, as well as your two backing pieces per the sizes in the instructions. We're also going to cut out three from each color, one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles. So we're gonna do three dark green, three light green or medium green, and three of the golden yellow color. These are gonna be for our shamrock when we start stitching. And then we're also going to use two pieces of project batting or a lightweight batting. Um, one in, cut in a seven by seven inch square and one in a five and a half by seven inch square. You'll also need a pillow insert. So the five and a half by nine and a half inch pillow insert works perfectly for this project. And if you choose to add the white pom-pom tassels, that will be um, an option for you as well. Now for your hoop, you're going to use light mesh cutaway stabilizer. And we're just gonna hoop up that light mesh cutaway in between our inner and outer ring of the hoop. I've got white bobbin fill in and I'm going to start with a dark color so you can see my placement lines and can reference what we're doing. But you can follow along step by step in the directions if you want to utilize the same colors that they did. Now depending on what size hoop you have, there are two different files that you will call one or the other up. If you only have a five by seven hoop is your largest field, um, you're gonna call up the first file. If you've got something larger, a six by 10 or larger hoop, you can call up the second file with the shamrock and the word so lucky on it. The difference in the two files is that the one has trimming lines that are given across the top and the bottom, whereas the other has the trimming lines all the way around. I'm going to use the larger file in this video. If anyone has questions about the smaller one, please feel free to shoot us an email, give us a call. We will be glad to address that or those questions or concerns. Okay, let's get started. So as I referenced in the last video, you do have three embroidery files with this design. One is going to be the filler block design. It comes in one size and then the other is going to be the main block or your background block that comes with the shamrock and the so lucky and the quilting. It's going to come in two sizes. If you have access to a hoop that is six by ten or larger, I would recommend using that one. It's just going to give you extra marking lines around all four sides instead of just across the top and the bottom, which is what you'll see with the five by seven. So in the video, I am going to use the larger file and we're gonna get this stitched out. 
Step one is your placement stitch. Step two, we're gonna take our larger square of project batting, cover up the entire placement area. Now, if you're using the five by seven design, you're gonna make sure you wanna center that over top of the line at the bottom and the top, making sure there's some overhang from the top and the bottom, as well as having it evenly centered on those lines. Once your batting is stitched into place, if you're using the larger of the two um, design sets, we're gonna trim all the way around the batting to remove it. If you're utilizing the smaller of the two design files, you're just gonna trim from the top and the bottom and you'll leave the sides that aren't stitched down there until later. And then we'll place the hoop back onto the machine. Machine step three is going to stitch a placement line for our fabric. Now we're going to place our fabric. Again, you will notice the larger design is going to have a placement line all the way around the box. Per your instruction step, if you're using the smaller one, you're just going to have a line on the top and the bottom. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to center our piece of fabric right to left and from top to bottom over top of those lines, making sure that we cover them up top and bottom and giving equal overhang on the right and left, whether we're using the smaller or the larger design file. And then we're gonna tack this in place. Now that our background is tacked down, we're going to stitch the quilting. So you're gonna to wanna to change thread to the thread color you would like your background quilting to be in. Next, you're going to want to change your color to something you're going to use for all of the placement stitches, um, including the stem and all of the petals of your four leaf, four leaf, three leaf clover. So we're going to start out with a placement stitch for the stem. I'm going to use my solid green that I've cut for my stem, cover up that entire area. I do like to always use some best press or some flatter, something to spray my applique pieces with prior to using them in embroidery. I spray them and press them to give them a nice crisp finish. It helps to keep them laying nice and flat. You could use tape here to tape this down if you so chose, um, but when you press them out nice and flat, usually they're gonna hold nice and still for you. Next, we're just gonna trim around the stem and remove the excess fabric. You can remove the hoop to do this or you can do it while it's on the machine. Once you've trimmed your stem, you're gonna stitch your placement line for all of the pieces for your clover. Now, now that our placement stitch for all of our pieces for our clover have been stitched down, we have created what I like to call a map. If you reference your instructions on page six, you will find this same map with numbered sections. Those numbered sections are the pieces of fabric we're gonna lay in order. So the map allows me to note which pieces of fabric I'm gonna lay when and where. So I'm gonna start with this first section in the lower left-hand corner, and I'm gonna use one of my medium greens. So I'm gonna take one of the rectangles of medium green, and I'm gonna cover up this entire first section, number one. I'm gonna place my fabric right side up, covering the entire area, and it's gonna tack it down with a line. When the machine stops, you can pull your hoop out, or if you have a machine that allows it, move it to trim position, and we're gonna trim from the top of the line the fabric away. Next, we're gonna take fabric number two, which is gonna be one of our gold fabrics, and I'm gonna lay this right side down. So they're gonna be right sides together, and I'm gonna line the edge up with that line we just trimmed along. When I do that, one thing I wanna note is what's gonna happen is this is gonna stitch down, and then we're gonna flip it. So you wanna make sure that when you flip, you have enough fabric to cover 
this second area, compartment number two, and then we're gonna stitch that in place. Next, we're gonna flip and fold this back to cover that area, but prior to doing that, I'm gonna use my Clover fabric folding pin with its magic liquid. I'm just gonna spread that on the stitch line. That's gonna give us a nice crisp seam. We're gonna fold it back. It's gonna lay nice and flat, and I don't have to take the machine or the hoop to the iron to press that. Next, we're gonna stitch the trimming and tack down line for section three. Now we're just going to take and trim the fabric along the top side of that line all the way across and lay down piece number three. Same thing, right sides together. I'm gonna wet this folding line and flip and fold that back. Now it's going to tack down that first heart-shaped leaf. And then we're going to trim around the entire heart-shaped leaf. You will notice in the corner where you have all these points coming together, you do have some bulk. So you may have to trim away one color and then the next color to get everything nice and smooth. But this will be covered up with a satin stitch when you're finished. Now we're gonna put the hoop back on and we're gonna repeat the same steps with the second and the third heart. Now that you have all of your pieces down and trimmed around, we're gonna stitch the satin stitch that goes all the way around the stem and all three leaves. So make sure you choose your green that you want for around the shamrock. Once the outline of the shamrock is finished in the satin stitch, you're gonna stitch the words, so lucky. So you can choose your thread color for this. You can leave the green in or pick a different shade of green, maybe something in gold, whatever makes your heart happy. Now we're gonna change colors to stitch the little flowers around the word so lucky. Now that the embroidery is finished, we'll remove from the hoop, we'll set aside to stitch our second block. And then we'll come back and trim all of them up and get them pieced together. Next, we're gonna call up part two, the quilting filler block design. We're again gonna hoop the light mesh cutaway stabilizer or a no-show mesh. And we're gonna stitch the placement stitch for the batting directly onto the stabilizer. We're gonna cover up the entire placement area with our rectangle piece of batting. Once the placement stitch has stitched for your fabric, you're gonna take your piece, you're gonna take your piece that has the fusible on the back, cover up the entire placement area, make sure that you've got a little equal overhang everywhere. Next, we're gonna stitch our quilting. Now your filler block has been finished stitching. We're gonna remove this from the hoop and we're gonna trim both blocks up to size. So now we're gonna trim up these blocks so that we can stitch them together to create the pillow. If you have stitched the block that has the trimming stitch all the way around, this trimming box measures six by six, which is what we wanna cut this block down to. So you can just trim along these lines to create that six by six block. Now, if you've stitched out the block that only has the top and bottom line, you're gonna to wanna to measure to make sure from top to bottom, you're at six inches. You can follow those lines. And then from side to side, you're gonna trim it up six by six. If you have a set of the orange pop rulers for either block, you could center this on the block and trim this, it to six and a half by six and a half to get that nice, easy, squared up option. And then just trim it down a quarter of an inch on each side as a way to get that six by six block if you're worried about doing the measurements. So I'm just going to trim right along these lines. Next, we're gonna trim up our second block, our filler block. And the trim size on this one is 
four and a half by six inches. So again, if you've got the rectangle orange pop ruler set, you can use that four and a half by six and a half inch and trim that up and then trim off a quarter inch at the top and the bottom to give you that four and a half by six inch rectangle. Or we can use that squaring stitch and trim it out at four and a half by six. Once we've completed our trimming, we're gonna sew these two pieces together down the center using a quarter inch seam allowance and our sewing machine. So we're gonna start off by piecing the two main panels of our small pillow together along the center section. So I'm gonna line these up and we're gonna stitch a quarter of an inch from the edge. It's nice you have this line here that you can follow as well. I like to keep my needle just inside that to make sure that doesn't show up. Once I've pieced those, I'm gonna press open my seam. So I like to open that up to keep the bulk from being on either side and even it out. So I'm gonna take that to my iron, I'm gonna press that. Next, once you have these two pieces together, you have the option to add this white pom-pom trim at the bottom if you choose. So to do that, you're gonna follow the instructions on page 10. We're gonna mark from the bottom edge. So we're gonna take a straight edge and a water soluble pin, and we're gonna mark one inch from the bottom, a straight line across. From there, you're gonna pin your pom-pom fringe trim to that line and stitch it down in place. Then we'll proceed adding the borders onto the rest of the pillow. If you'd like to omit the pom-pom fringe, you can skip to page 11 and start with the instructions at the top of the page about adding the flanges or the borders and just skip the trim. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm not much of a pom-pom trim kind of girl. I'm just going to add borders by starting with my sides and then my top and bottom. I'm gonna press these open and then we'll add the top and bottom. Now I'm gonna add with a quarter inch seam allowance the flange to the top and the bottom. And I'll take and press these open as well. Once we're ready to prepare the backing by creating a quarter inch fold and then a second quarter inch fold, on one edge. Now these are square pieces, so it doesn't matter what edge you pick, but we're gonna fold it over a quarter inch, a quarter inch again to create our hems. And an easy trick for doing that is to lay our ruler on the quarter inch line right along the edge, use our clover fabric folding pin that we used earlier, and run a bead right down the edge of that quarter inch line, and then fold this right along that line gives you a nice straight edge without trying to press and hold and press and hold. And then we're gonna just lay that ruler down again on our folded fabric, creating that line, folding over one more time where I'll take it to the iron and press it in place before we stitch this down. So just a nice, quick, easy way to create your quarter inch edge. Once I've sewn all the way around, I'm gonna clip my corners before I turn this right side out. And I do like to double clip, so I clip once, and then come back in at a steeper angle and clip again on all four corners. Next, we're gonna turn this right side out. Once it's right side out, I'm gonna take to the ironing board, I'm gonna press this on my wool mat, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna stitch in the ditch all the way around to create the flange. The pillow form will stuff the inside of the pillow and the flange will just be left flat as a decorative element. Once we have everything pressed and we're ready to stitch in the ditch along our flange, I've changed out my presser foot and put a stitch in the ditch foot or a narrow edge foot on the machine. This has a center flange and allows me to ride that right along where those two seams were sewn so that I can stitch right in that ditch nice and easy. I've also matched my upper thread and my lower thread, my bobbin thread and my top thread, so that it looks nice and pretty on the back as well as the front.
So by stitching in the ditch, we've created a flange here and a case for that pillow form that we have already ready to go. Next, once we've created that space for our pillow form, we're just gonna stuff that in there and be ready for St. Patty's Day. Just a little idea, think tank time. This little shamrock design and the word so lucky, you could stitch that out minus the quilting background and the placement stitches for the batting on something like one of these gold zippered pouches. And it would make a really cute way to wrap up a St. Patty's Day gift for somebody. Give them a little zippered bag with a shamrock on it. You could use the So Lucky or maybe even put another um, little message on there about St. Patty's Day. You could stitch just the shamrock along with a message. Um, there are all kinds of Irish blessings and sentiments out there. This one, I just added the shamrock by itself um, with a message that I stitched out from my software um, that I added. You could border this with a checkerboard border in these same prints, make this into a, a bigger version of a pillow, um, something you could hang on your wall, a wall hanging, that sort of thing to have up for the holidays as well. So don't just think because you have this just like this means you have to make this just like this. I hope that you all have fun making the pillow and come up with some other cute ideas that you can tag us on our Facebook group and share, us, share with us what you've made so far with the Jill Dealer Exclusive. Thanks everybody.